In September 2020, the Russian Sbear Bank went through corporate rebranding and they just dropped the word bank. Now it's just Sbear. And what's the message here? Obviously, the company wants to go above and beyond banking industry. The CEO, Herman Graf, is trying to convert the largest and the most profitable bank in Central and Eastern Europe into a tech company. In December 2020, Sber started testing autonomous cars in Moscow. Have you ever heard of a similar pivoting story before? Subscribe to my YouTube channel and I will share my thoughts on it. Bakunin live. About a year ago, Sberbank created a joint venture with a company called Cognitive Technologies to develop self-driving systems. Uh, in April 2020, they created an internal division, Sber Automotive Technologies, and seven months later, we're already seeing self-driving cars from Sberbank on public roads in Moscow. Does it really take seven months to put uh, self-driving cars on the public roads? I don't think so. They are obviously leveraging the technology which is coming from cognitive technologies and the company was created back in 1993 they have enough expertise because they have been working on ADAS and autonomous drive so from now on we have two very serious and powerful companies in Russia Yandex and Sberbank working on autonomous drive let's have a look at those two companies how they positioned against each other and what to expect in the future Yandex has a fleet of 160 cars, Sber is trying to achieve 10 units by the end of 2020, and I will use Waymo as a benchmark and a good reference here, they have a fleet of 600 units in the US. Yandex is using Hyundai Sonata and Sber is using Kia Seed, they're both relying on LiDAR-based technology. In my understanding, Yandex is developing their own in-house LiDAR technology, while Sber Bank uh, is using off-the-shelf uh, Velodyne units. Yandex started testing uh, on public roads back in 2017. Uh, we know uh, Sberbank just launched the vehicles in uh, December 2020. And just as a reference again, Waymo started testing 10 years ago back in 2009 in California and it took them roughly 10 years to be able to deploy and commercialize the technology in only four towns in uh, Arizona. As I said earlier, Sber is testing in Moscow while Yandex is testing in Russia, in Israel, and in the US. And the, we know that the development of self-driving technology is a very costly and long-term exercise. And the, if you want to amortize the entry ticket, the upfront investment, you need to be present in multiple markets. Personally, I am not very satisfied with the vehicle choice of Sberbank and Yandex. Uh, if you want to be scalable, if you want to apply less efforts to convert uh, your vehicle into self-driving system-ready vehicle, you just want to rely on something more advanced in terms of technology, you need to have drive-by-wire, you need to have electric architecture, you need to have redundancies. Practically speaking, you can convert any vehicle into self-driving system-ready vehicle, and we saw one of the examples in the past. The company called Drive AI, which was based here in California, was actually using Nissan NV200 and uh, the famous New York taxi vehicle, and they were converting it into an autonomous car. So this team was acquired uh, by Apple back in 2019 and I'm sure this team is right now working on the project which was just roughly announced a few days to know uh, the famous Apple car. Nevertheless, they were using the very old technology, the vehicle which was uh, launched back in 2009, very simple light commercial vehicle and they applied a lot of effort to make sure this vehicle uh, is capable of self-driving. So I would say there is a common task for uh, both Sber and Yandex to be sure they can strike a deal with a car maker and can secure either a plug-in hybrid or a fully electric platform to be able to scale up uh, efficiently in the future.
In the press release, Bear announced that they are using uh, the technology and mapping from the company they recently acquired, which is called Tugis. They have now 72% of this mapping company. Is it necessary the same type of maps you need for autonomous drive technology? I don't think so. You need high definition maps, centimeter level maps, but it's a very good starting point. No doubts Yandex self-driving group is leveraging Yandex maps too. Since March 2020, you can actually test self-driving cars with safety drivers in 13 regions in Russia, including Moscow and my home region, Tatarstan, where actually testing was permitted even earlier than uh, March 2020. Commercial deployment, however, is not uh, allowed yet. And if you want to scale up your fleet, the process is very, very slow and hectic. You actually need to certify every single vehicle you're putting on a public road for uh, public testing with self-driving technology. There is a very, very clear intention from the Russian government to simplify the rules and regulation uh, to make sure Russian companies can develop self-driving technology. However, during COVID, the priorities are a little bit different. While you have to those heavyweight companies like Yandex and Sberbank, I hope things will start moving much faster. The only company today which is offering driverless rides is Waymo. They are doing it in Arizona since a few months. Uh, they launched the service back in October 2020. How far is Bear and Yandex from the same milestone? Well, it's, it's quite hard to answer this question. We know that Waymo started testing their vehicles back in 2009 and we know they were very excited and were hoping to launch this service much earlier, but it took them roughly 10 years uh, to fix the problem which is called long tail, which means uh, they were able to handle roughly 99% of the use cases on the roads uh, back, in, I don't know, maybe in 2009 or 10 or 12, but the, the remaining 1% uh, was super complicated to catch every aspect of uh, driving on public roads and the service came live only in 2020. So uh, in addition to that, uh, Waymo is launching this service in Arizona in very uh, simple driving conditions, dry climate, while Yandex and Sber are testing in Moscow with heavy traffic and snow. If you ask me to predict when Yandex and Sber are going to put their autonomous cars on public roads commercially, there is one additional factor to consider. Wait for a press release with a car maker. And this press release must include the vehicle platform, volumes and start of production milestone. In addition to that, you need a couple of years of development and that's going to be your date of commercial deployment. We all know that Yandex and Sber are very, very tough competitors, and that's exactly what we see from the mass media, from the press. Nevertheless, as I said earlier, developing a self-driving technology is a very long and very expensive exercise. I would definitely recommend Yandex and Sber to partner. I know it's much easier to say than to do, but there are at least two aspects where they can work together. For instance, they can lobby together the regulation change in front of the Russian government and they're both very heavyweight and respected companies in Russia, so I think it will be much easier for them to achieve this objective. And the second one, and I think this is a very uh, good challenge for both companies or for any company in Russia trying to bring a car maker, a global car maker with a dedicated technology, self-driving system ready technology into the Russian market. So if they join and combine volumes and commitments, I think it will be a little bit easier to execute. If you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you next week.